Hi guys, this is Misty with How Creative Creations. Today we are going to make this coffee cozy. It fits on your mugs and your travel tumblers, your tumblers, and even the cups that you get at Starbucks or Dutch Brothers or whatever coffee place like the Hungry Heifer in Cushing, Oklahoma, that you get your coffee from. This one is going to say Coffee Llama. So first things first, take this piece. It's just a scrap piece. I folded it over so I when I cut on the half mark, I get two. I cut it out and I put it on. I floated it onto the stabilizer on my hoop. And I already programmed what I wanted it to say. Like I said, it's going to say Coffee Llama. So here we are stitching it out. And it takes a few minutes to stitch out. Now I'm stitching this in, an, in a bright blue because there's bright blue on the pennants and the llama's necks and everything in this fabric. So I do a lot of these as gifts at shows. Um, I actually sell quite a few at shows. I'm going to put them in my website just because I figure other people might want them. It's a great gift for coffee, for coffee people. So, I remembered this is a scrap piece from a flat fat quarter, so it's about eighteen inches that I folded over. So, they're about six inches long and they have an expandable closure. I'll show you in a minute on the back with a button and elastic. So, they fit multiple sizes. Um, for display purposes, I have bought a tumbler from the Dollar Tree that I set up. It shows with one of these on it. It's a standard coffee tumbler. So, sorry about the noise in the background. My 17-year-old son is learning how to cook dinner. And he's making monster burritos. So, me, the embroidery machine does make it so much quicker. I mean, I have not sped this particular video up at all anywhere in this video. This is actual speed. And we're on the second E. Now we're going to the L's for the llama. And you can see little bitty, and I'll trim them here in a minute, and I believe it's on camera. There are little jumper threads that you have to trim later. No big deal. It happens all the time. I trim those with little bitty snips that you see right there. And also, t my tomorrow, which is the day that this will actually be posted, I am starting a new project, completely different. It is not um, any of my gifts or stick ponies. I am making 18th century stays for my friend Amanda, who is an author and she's writing a book about historic 18th century. Her, the setting I believe is in 1730s so I'm making approximately 1730-ish stays and she is going to do a series and vlog about what it's like to live in these stays as women would have in those days. And she's going to do it at least through the winter. So when she's got that up and everything, and I've got my video up, or as she starts posting, I'll link to her channel and she'll link to mine, just so that we're, yeah, because it, I'm making them and she's going to wear them. I'm also down the road, I'm going to make her another shift, another set of stays, and 
if we decide she needs a bum pad. Because girl got curves. She's like, she got curves. Naturally. And, uh, so we don't know if she's going to need the bump pad. But I'll also be doing her skirt and her jacket for period pieces, too. Okay, I finished stitching this. And move the machine out. Take the, I'm taking the pins out. I gotta adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I take the pins out, and this is the neatest part of my day, because I use tear away stabilizer. Look at this, cool. And it comes off. Is that not awesome? I'm just gonna set it aside. And I pick any big pieces off in the back. And I lay it out. Now see, I'm trimming the little jumpers. And this pattern, sometimes some of y'all ask me where I get my patterns. This one is the cursive lettering that came with my machine. And I have a Brother SE400 sewing and embroidery machine. It is a beginner basic model. So now I'm pinning right sides together. And I start by lining up the ends. And then I do the center points on the long pieces. And you'll notice it's not straight. It is actually curved. Slightly. Now I have to change out take this piece off and you change up the foot and you put the regular piece on you change up the foot turn it back on see regular presser foot and this machine came with this neat little circular screwdriver easy for changing out the foot so I change up the foot and I'm just gonna stitch in the navy blue here also or the bright blue dark blue whatever same blue that I stitched in. I personally don't buy a bunch of specialty embroidery thread. I was I have been lucky to be gifted lots of thread from lots of different places. So in this scrap of fabric I made mask and this is the scrap pieces. So I personally I like for environmental reasons, for price reasons, for cost reasons, I try to use every little bit I possibly can. See, I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to go down the top side, the top long side. And I just stitch down and I'm just doing the edge of the foot, not even a quarter inch. Maybe an eighth inch seam allowance. I really don't have a seam allowance for this. It's not quite a quarter. And then I stitch down one side. And that'll be the button side. And then I stitch down the bottom. And sometimes I stitch over my pins. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I take them out. I try to remember to take them out. It's better for your machine if you take them out. And I take it and I clip the corners so it turns a little bit easier and a little bit prettier. And then turn it. And when I'm turning things, I use a couple of different tools. I know a lot of people prefer things. I'm simple. I buy a lot of polyfill stuffing. And they come every time I buy it, they have one of these sticks. No matter what size I buy. I keep them. So I use it to turn with. And it does. It makes perfect. Some people use chopsticks the same way. I just use these. I turn my corners. And then on this end, I'm just going to turn it in. 
finger press it and pin right in the center to hold it. And now I'm taking a little pity piece, scrap piece of elastic. This was left over from the end of an earpiece of a mask. I fold it and hold it. I stick it in and then I pin it in place. And that's the only place I use a pin on this. See, I stuck a pin right in the middle of it. Hold it. I make sure the corners are nice and pretty. Now I'm going to top stitch, and that's going to seal this end with the elastic. And it'll make everything all nice and pretty and neat. I do pull on the seams to make sure they're all lined up. And I use the same measurement I did before, just the width of the clear part of my presser foot. And I run it through. Um, one bonus I love about this machine when you're sewing is it has buttons that you can push where as soon as you start, it automatically back stitches for you. And then when you hit backstitch by itself, it backstitches and cuts your thread. It's kind of handy. I do a lot of batch sewing, and that comes in to a lot, a whole lot of handy. When you're batch sewing mask, 20 at a time, which I did do 22 today. So this comes in loads of handy when you're stitching. I push the button, it backstitch three stitches and goes back forward, then it cuts it. I still have to trim it, but I mean, it cuts it. And it's all neat. And notice on the back side, you don't see it. I still use the same bobbin thread. It's a white, but it's clear. Then in one of my four or five button jars, and I'm going to use a lime green. I was going to stitch in lime green, and then I decided that blue looked better. So it has both colors on it. So I'm using this, but I'm going to use some blue thread. And I will admit, I'm not, as old, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I can't see as well as I used to, and I should wear my glasses more, but I can't see thread and needles with my glasses on at all. I have to hold my breath and hold my tongue just right. See, I gave up and went to the other end. <laughs> and then I double it. And I taught Ethan, my middle child, he's graduated in a couple of years. I taught him the other night how to do a button, sew a button on. He had a pair of pants. He actually asked me to show him, which I thought was awesome of him. He wanted to learn. So I showed him the match method. I am using an embroidery needle for mine, but I do a couple of stitches before I even put the button on. And then I place the needle. And then undo the button. And this one's a two hole button. So then you just stitch the button on top of that needle. It'll pull out in just a minute. I do 
about five or six stitches over the top of the needle and then I go down and then I wrap it around the needle oh this one it's still going through this is the second one of these I've made today I always get it caught on the corners too for some reason. You should go down, back up. I think this is where I did it. Okay, you wrap around the needle and the thread between the fabric and the button about 10 times. I don't count, I've been doing this for so long. I take the needle out after a couple of them and keep going. This gives the button some clearance for things to go around it like the elastic strap or when you're buttoning your pants so the button hole can go through it just makes it all work a little easier at least that's what I was taught by my Nana so so how I tied him and then I did a couple more stitches over the top of all that and then I tied my knot on the back and I tied two knots So I'm going to I'm going to trim this and that's all done. I will also put a little dollop of clear fingernail polish on the threads and that'll help it keep from fraying. See? Coffee llama. And there's the completed project. And remember, if you like these videos, like them, comment, share, but follow, subscribe. It helps us out. It helps our channel out. And please share with us on Instagram anything that you've made that we've done. Y'all have a great day. Be blessed. Bye.